Uh, well, <clears throat> thank you everyone for coming here today. I know it's a holiday, so uh, appreciate you all being here. And uh, it's a pretty important day in the in the history of the Warriors. We're here to announce Mike Dunleavy as our new GM, and uh, very very excited about it. Um, I wanted to uh, to say first of all that Mike has you know been with us for five years. Is that right? Five. Fast. Five years, I, it, almost impossible for me to imagine. It seemed so quickly that it went by, but I remember meeting Mike first with Bob. I think we were in New York. Mm -hmm. We had a dinner once about five years ago, and uh, here we are five years later. He's new GM of the Warriors, so really excited. I want to say, first of all, I think we're very, very fortunate that uh, he was in our organization, uh, and uh, I think we had a <coughs> good sense. I had a good sense all along that if something ever did happen with Bob that um, and you know, which was a possibility, clearly, uh, that we had someone in waiting that, and, and in training uh, for the job. He's 20 years of experience in the NBA, you know, 15 years, I believe, as a player, um, and uh, five years with us. So a lot of experience with NBA, with coaches, with, with teams, with organizations, with the league, and all that. So I'm um, actually a really experienced guy when you really get down to it, if you really think about it in terms of the NBA. Uh, he is a, a person who has a family guy, has four kids. Um, he's he's fits culturally and has fit culturally uh, very much in you know in line with the way this organization runs uh, and operates, and is a very collaborative person, uh, which is very very important because I've said it a million times in our organization. We it's a we thing, and I I mean I can't emphasize how important that is. This is a we deal. This is not me. This is not. You know, Steve Kerr only. It wasn't Bob, just Bob Myers. It's not just the players, although we have, do have some great players, including one in particular that is fantastic in terms of legendary with this franchise. But it really is a we effort, and Mike fits right into that. The cultural fit was spectacular. The cultural fit was spe spectacular with Mike. And so I think we're, you know, very, very excited to have him here today and um, uh, to be able to announce him and his appointment to the job. Uh, I, I want to say right off the bat, I don't anticipate any other title changes uh, in uh, organization. With Mike is the GM. Um, Kirk will, re in case I know people are going to ask this, Kirk is going to remain in his title, which is, I think it's EVP. I don't pay a lot of attention to titles, to be frank, but um, basically same role he's had, and he's been with us for 13 years, so he has a role in the organization. And there'll probably be some other changes Mike will make uh, going forward uh, within the organization, uh, you know, raising the responsibilities of some, obviously to take up some of the slack. But overall, very, very excited to have him and welcome him here today. Well, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Um, let me just start with thanking you and Peter and uh, our whole ownership group for this opportunity. Uh, re really, really special moment for me and my family. Um, this, this is one of the premier organizations in all sports. And so for me to be able to have the opportunity to uh, continue to lead our group uh, means a tremendous amount. We certainly have some work cut out for us, but uh, I think the future is bright. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge and thank my predecessor, Bob Myers. Uh, Bob's been an agent for me. I've worked for him. He's been a great mentor, but most of all, he's been a great friend. And um, we're all gonna miss him here. I know I speak for everybody. Uh, big shoes to fill, but um, you know we've got a great group, great collaboration. It's, it's very doable. Um, it's funny, I was talking to Bob this week and he asked me if you know, you're know gonna do the job. And I said, yeah, I think so. But you know, I gotta be honest, I'm a little uncomfortable you know, taking your job. And he said, don't leave me, come on, man. It's not like you're taking an organ, it's just a job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we sort of had a laugh about that. And after, at that point, I was like, all right, I'm good to go here. Got Bob's approval, which is good. And he's somebody I, I've leaned on and will continue to lean on as will a lot of people in our organization. So thank you, Bob, for all you've done with this, with this team. And um, you will be missed, but we know you'll be around. Uh, the other people I'd like to thank are my family, um, my parents. Obviously, a lot of people know my dad from coaching and playing and also doing being a GM. So he's uh, set a tremendous example, example for me growing up. Uh, my mom as well. Anything you may say good about me probably is from my mom, not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, thanks, Mom. And then, uh, lastly, last but not least, recognize my immediate family, my four kids. My oldest daughter, Lucy, is here today. And most especially, my wife, Sarah, who um, 
if anybody knows this this business, the, the moving around, it's, it's very transient, tough hours, strange things, a lot of unknowns. And so having a support system like family and, and a wife like, like Sarah has been tremendous. So you're a rock. I really appreciate it. And um, thanks for everything. And, and, and thanks for the stuff moving forward because I know uh, you're going to be quite busy. <laughs> um, now, as far as the job, I'd say, um, you know, it starts now. We've got a big week with the draft coming up. Um, and our roster is uh, our roster's in a good place. I'd say we don't have too many decisions to make, but we've had, we have things to consider. And um, we will take a lot of things into account. Uh, the draft is, is, is a certainly one of the three areas we feel like we can improve on. And looking back on last year, you know, by all accounts, we had a successful season. But for us, you know, finishing the top eight after winning the championship, we know and we want to be better. And, and our goal this summer, Will be to go about improving improving our roster. Uh, we've, we've got some play. We got one key player that we love to bring back, and then after that, you know, m my main objective, our group's main objective, would be to to improve and feel like going into it, we've we've got a shot to contend for a title again. So, I'm confident about that. I'm excited to continue working with um, our great players, our coaches, and our staff. Um, as Joe mentioned, the thing that I've experienced here and feel great about is the collaboration, all of us working together and, you know, creating the synergy that, that's, that's gone so well here. So um, really appreciative of the job and the opportunity, Joe. Thanks again. And, um, you know, here we go. I'm open to any questions or anything anybody has. Y yes. Uh, so much of what Bob uh, was known for was his relationships, established relationships with the, the main players, you know, Draymond, Steph, Clay. Where, how do you feel like your relationship, established relationship is with those guys right now? Yeah, I think it's good. You know, I've reached out to those guys in, in the last week or so, and we've had good conversation um, getting to know them over the last few years, even more so. We have the mutual respect of, being, of having played. You know, I played 15 years in the league. Nowhere near as accomplished as those guys, but I think there's a mutual bond and understanding. And, and like I said, I've gotten to know those guys well enough over the last few years, and we'll continue to do so. Um, but those guys, um, you know, they're the core of what we do. So having a relationship with them is important. Mike, Bob said last month when he <coughs> on his departing uh, news conference that uh, you could do the job. You'd be great if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> so was there a thought process here that you had to go through in addition to talking to Bob that told you, okay, this is what I want to do, or, or did you want a job all along? Yeah, I think any time um, you know, an opportunity like this comes up, it, in most cases it's a no-brainer, but you should always think through things. Uh, I'm pretty measured in my approach. I'll do that. We'll do that with our decisions um, going forward. But sure, you, you know, I think you want to talk to your family about it and consider things. But when Joe presented me with the opportunity, um, I, I just didn't see a way where I, I didn't want to do it. Mike, uh, when you left here, it probably wasn't the best term as a player. Uh, when did you, like, what was it like coming back into the organization? Was there a part of you that's like, I'm never going back there again? Or like, when, how did you smooth that part out? Yeah, you know what's funny is, um, you know, it's how things can kind of come full circle. Although, like, that circle that I was in when I played, I mean, it's a different city. It was almost like a different organization, different city, um, different team, far less success. So to say it's come full circle probably wouldn't be accurate. But ever since I've gotten back, you know, I've felt very comfortable. Um, this is a tremendous organization. Go in there and see the banners that are up. Uh, much different than when I was here as a player. But I, I have learned that in this league, when you leave a situation or trade it or move on, things come back around. You know, my dad played for the Milwaukee Bucks. He coached for the Milwaukee Bucks as assistant. He came back as a head coach, and then I went there as a player. So I've moved, I've moved to and from Milwaukee four times. So I've learned in this business, <coughs> you, don't, you don't really cross anything off, off the books. And um, so needless to say, coming back here has been great. Love our fan base. Uh, the passion's amazing. And you kind of felt that in the last five years. And, I think we all just want to kind of keep this thing going. Mike, um, you said there aren't that many huge decisions to make, but obviously most of us on the way driving over here heard about Draymond opting out. Um, and one, were you expecting that? And two, I mean, you are getting thrown kind of right into the fire of uh, a, a pretty critical summer for, for this team as terms of what it's going to look like in the future. Just are you prepared for that? And uh, again, were you surprised about Draymond? Yeah, so I, I saw the report too. Um, until we get the paperwork in the filing, we can't really 
comment or say much. So um, I will say, I think Steve has said it, I'll reiterate, we really want Draymond back. Um, what he means to this organization, this team, in terms of trying to win at the highest level, uh, we, we, we feel like we have to have him. Um, so that's very important. Um, beyond that, yeah, I mean, I think a lot can be made of all the challenges that, that are coming our way, whether it be aging roster, the new CBA with some of the limitations there, um, anything else you can bring up. But um, we're aware of all those things, but we also feel like we're in a great, great place because we've got a competitive owner willing to spend and a, a group that's really tied in. It's got good synergy, good processes, good sound decision making. So we, we feel confident we can navigate it. Uh, Mike, you worked with Bob for a number of years. What do you think is similar with the way you guys operate, and what differentiates you in the way that you operate? They're both tall, <laughs> and we have bad and we have bad hips. And they have bad hips. I've learned they both have bad hips. Um, you know, I think as, as far as similarities, um, you know, we're really close. So I guess there's got to be a lot of things that align. But um, you know, I'd probably start with humility. I think for the most part, we're pretty humble guys. Um, family first, and. Um, I think we're good listeners. Both like to hear people out and hear groups out, and as, as leaders, you know, try and make the right decision. Uh, differences. Um, I think I'm slightly better basketball player than him. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but you know, a after that, Bob, Bob is out of, this, out of this world talented in, in what he's able to do with people, and um, you know, his, his record speaks for itself. So um if i you know if i could be anywhere near the realm of successful as he's been here it would, it would, it would be it would be great joe i just kind of wanted to ask um you know i know you mentioned like the collaborative approach that the front office has always taken but obviously there is an ultimate decision maker or power structure within a front office do you view you know mike's elevation to the level from a power structure standpoint that bob was at or or is that shifting at all no it's um <clears throat> he's the top basketball decision maker you can call titles whatever you want He's the top basketball decision maker in the organization. Um, and, uh, you know, perhaps a little bit of difference is that when Bob came in, actually, it's hard to remember, you know, all these years ago now, but he came in right as an agent uh, and uh, was an assistant GM, actually, when he started. And we promoted him to GM. And then he got a title change subsequently, you know, with success and more of a more of a compensation thing, I think, more than anything else, because he was really in the same role. Uh, and so Mike is in the same role, and he's the top decision maker within basketball. So from my standpoint, he's the guy that I'll be calling however many times people think I call him a day. Actually, he called me this morning. I just want you to know, woke me up. Uh, actually, I was up, but I was watching a show on TV, first take. <laughs> Joe, a couple quick questions. Uh, have you already been calling and texting Mike uh, recently? Is that a serious question? <laughs> <laughs> well, when did, when did you first start texting and calling? Well, first of all, it started long before he got this job. Um, you know, obviously, we, we communicate. I communicate not only with, did communicate only with Bob, but, you know, with Kirk and Larry Harris and the draft and Mike, but not, not as often. Obviously, Bob got the brunt of that. Um, but, uh, you know, we... We communicate a lot, and one of the things that you have to be able to do to do this job, you have to be a good communicator. He has to be able to communicate you know, to the players, with the players, and I think he's going to be great at it, by the way. As a former player, it certainly will help. He has to communicate to his employees, people who work for him in basketball operations, and he's got to be able to communicate up, you know, which is me. You. <laughs> and uh, that's actually all CEOs in companies, if you want to compare it to that, it's kind of the same thing. That's what makes a great CEO, a great leader, is someone who can do all three levels of communication, here, here, and here. And this guy has that ability. He's a really good communicator. He's very thorough in his thinking. He's very analytical. He's very, he used the word measured, which is another word I, I really like. Uh, he's a, 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 he thinks in a measured way. He doesn't just blurt things out. He, so I think he's going to be fantastic at this job. And uh, you know, we've been communicating for a long time, and we still we do and will do it going forward. Just follow up is you know, he, other than Mike being there, which he was. Um, what kind of questions did you ask about? And what did you need to hear from him to beat out other candidates? And did you interview other candidates seriously, or was it always going to be Mike? I mean, there was not a decision that had been made because I don't think I or we wanted to kind of even contemplate Bob leaving. We obviously liked Bob a lot, and uh, he was he was great. So until he made a decision, I didn't think I don't think I really allowed myself to 
to think about that very much. But once he made the decision, which was you know pretty late in the process, um, I think in the background what had been going on is you know processing how would we go about this. And I always knew that we had this guy sitting here in the wings. Um, had to have a conversation with him. We did have conversations, obviously, uh, to make sure that everything I thought was correct uh, and everything he thought about the job. He wanted, you know, I didn't know if he wanted it as well, so that we were on the same wavelength. So, did I interview other people? No, not really. Um, we didn't go outside, if that's what your question, because I think we believe in continuity. We believe we have a really well oiled machine, good running, well running organization. And Mike, you know, gets along fabulously with all the parties inside. Everything from, you know, um, Kirk Lacob to um, Brandon Schneider sitting right here. He's very interactive with the business side, which I think is a, a great thing in our organization, uh, and all the coaches and players. Mike, what do you think you learned? What do you think you learned the most from Bob? Well, I, I think I'm still learning stuff from him, which is which is a good thing. Uh, our, our friendship and relationship remains strong. Um, I think. With Bob, the biggest thing I've learned is the value of relationships and uh, his, his connection with people, not only within this organization, on this team, but throughout the league um, is important. I mean, you, you guys have seen Bob enough the amount of times he's had his you know, earbuds in and on the phone and talking to people. And it's not just catching up with buddies. It's real stuff. And it's communication and, and that, that type of stuff. From even the last five years, um, getting on top of that and, and, and learning to do that and, you know, I think, in the, in the first place, I'm you know, comfortable with it and, and, and good at it, but Bob's taken it to a different level and it's something that, that I really have learned to value. Mike, how do you assess last season as a whole, the regular season, the, the two rounds of the playoffs, and what you have and sort of the stated, you know, S Steph and Clay and Draymond stating that they want to be together with Steve versus the need to get better and contend for a championship and the avenues that you have to get better. In, in essence, they want to be together, but you also have to get better. Sure, sure. I think talking about last year, certainly um, compared with the prior year where we were you know, the best team in the league and won the championship, uh, last year was internally a letdown for us. At the same time, we were two games away from reaching the conference finals. So I think you have to look at it all into perspective. Um, we feel like our core group of guys, you know, led by Steph Curry, is still, still at an incredibly high level. And for that reason, we feel like we have a chance to always be knocking on the door. And, and the rest of the roster going down, down the line, we feel like is a, is a group that probably needs to be better about playing together and connecting. Um, and so that's something we'll look to solve for th this offseason. And by the way, that's not only externally, that's internally, you know, through you know, working together and, and doing all that stuff. So I think as far as last year, um, below our standards, but I think we learned a lot. And I think we, we know what we need to do to improve. And uh, now it's our job to go out and do it. Joe, I so want to ask you a question about this new CBA, but I, I know better. <laughs> you don't want to go there, I know. You can ask. I <laughs> um, but on Draymond, I mean, what, a, what do you think he's meant to what you guys have been able to do over the years? And what do you see him being able to do if he should come back down the road? What's your question exactly? Is what do you, you want Draymond what, to do something different? No, You're, no. My question to you is, what do you think he's meant to what you guys have done oh, already? He's meant. And right. and what do you think he can mean in the uh, going forward in the future as he ages? Um, look, he's been a spectacular player for us. Um, we would not have these championships um, without his involvement. Uh, no question. I think everyone understands that in this room. Um, he's meant a lot to this franchise. Um, He's a bit of a controversial player, perhaps in some corners around the league and certain things that have happened over the years. And he knows that. We know that. Um, but the good overwhelms the bad, is what I would say. And, um, <clears throat> you know, he probably needs to improve just like we all do uh, and get better at certain things. And, and we probably need, as, as Mike said, to improve as an organization um, in some ways, uh, for sure. But. He's, he's meant a lot, and I think if he does come back, um, that he will be very important to our success, uh, certainly going forward in the next few years. Hi, Mike. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. Appreciate it. Steve, well, Bob said his relationship with Steve was called it rare, I mean, unique, that um, 
a GM and a, and a coach are that that close. What what um, <coughs> is your relationship like with Steve, and and can you build off kind of what Bob and Steve established um, in terms of the camaraderie and and the collaboration that Joe has kind of touched on? Sure. I admittedly, uh, a big part of me taking this position is my relationship with Steve. Uh, Steve's a person that I look up to, not only work with, but somebody that I trust in you know just in an incredible level. And um, what he's been able to do for this team and this organization over the last decade or so, um, it, it makes my job easier. Uh, not, ha not having to worry about on a daily basis what's going on with the coaching staff, what's going on with the head coach. It just takes one thing off the table for me. We have a great relationship. Um, you know, we speak pretty regularly, especially now. So, but um, you know, I'm really excited to have somebody like Steve guide me and help me along the way with this because he's also been in my shoes before as a as a GM. So he's seen both sides of it. He gets both sides of it. And um, really looking forward to working with him. Hi, Mike. Congratulations. Um, a couple weeks ago, Bob said nothing lasts forever. And right now, you've had a core of Steph, Clay, and Dre. What would it mean to you to be able to keep those guys warriors for their entire career uh, moving forward? Well, that's certainly the hope. You know, we love those guys and value them. And, you know, I think there is a way to do it. I and mean, that's something we'll have to work through. But um, it's, it's certainly possible. And the biggest thing is those guys are still playing at a high level. I mean, Steph's conservatively one of the top five players in the league, conservatively. And then um, you know, Draymond just had an incredible year, uh, essentially first team all defense. We're biased, but he's one of the premier defenders in the league. And then Clay's really returned well from his, from his Achilles injury in his knee. So those guys are still playing really well at an, at an older age. And so that makes it possible, I think, to, to kind of continue to have them here as long as they want to be here. Hey, Mike, Jason Dumas, Crown Force Sports. Congratulations, first off. Um, when you're evaluating talent and looking to bring guys in, whether it's free agency or to draft, what skills do you specifically prioritize? Well, I think first and foremost, you got to distinguish between acquiring talent and building a team. And so for us, the team thing is huge. How do these players work and interact together? Uh, beyond that, as far as individual skill sets, place a premium on being able to play both ways. You know, defend your position and on the offensive end to be able to bring something to the table. High premium on shooting in this day and age with the, the way the league's going, shooting is important. And so, from you know, from there, those are, those are kind of the main things. And you, you work your way down with other skill sets. And character is a big part of it. Um, but again, emphasizing what works for our team, and and, and and that may not work, you know, for other teams. It's, it's different. But knowing what our coaching staff likes and what's worked here is is an important part of the evaluation. Yeah, I kind of want to ask both of you about the draft. You know, it is Thursday. <laughs> um, are, are, how comfortable are you guys adding um, a, another young player to a roster that obviously, you know, has plenty of young players? And in that same realm, is it possible that you guys are more targeting a, a, a ready-now player more than, you know, a, a younger project? I, I will let Mike <coughs> handle that because it's his responsibility. But I'll just say that they all seem young to me. Uh, so. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm a lot older, so they're all young. <laughs> I think our main focus is on, you know, drafting a really good basketball player. And, um, you know, like, like Joe said, it's pretty hard not to draft a young guy. Now the difference between 19 and 23, eight, you know, years of age, sure. You can, you can debate that. But I think our focus, as it has for the most part, is, is to be drafting <coughs> players that, you know, can, are, good, are actually good at basketball. And so that'll be the – That'll be the thing. And then we'll look at it from a roster standpoint of how it looks. I mean, could you make an argument last year we were too young in some way? Sure. But that's, that's what we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at once the draft has gone by and, and figure it out from there. Mike, I know things could change in the next few days or weeks. Uh, and I know you just took the job, but two names that have come up in you know, rumor speculation about your team are Jordan, Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga. You've been on board when, when they came on, uh, when they were acquired. What are your just general thoughts of Jordan Poole uh, as his future moving forward and also on Jonathan Kaminga? We love having those guys here. Jordan, especially with his contract extension, uh, we plan to have him here for four more years at least. And then Jonathan's, you know what? He's shown really good progression and growth, I think, in his first couple of years. Unfortunately for him, I think the playing time hasn't been there. And so that's on all of our shoulders to figure out how do we get him in the game more. Um, that's on Jonathan's shoulders to, you know, to improve and make the right adjustments to his game, as well as you know, our front office, our coaching staff, figuring out what, what works. So uh, both those guys, really, really good young players we're pleased with. They have great value around the league. And um, you know, I, 
obviously a lot of rumors and stuff coming up at this time of the year, but um, we're happy with those guys. Hey, Mike, um, just to kind of piggyback off of that, you know, Jonathan's going to year three, Moses year three, Jordan turned 24 today. How do you kind of weigh the big three, which are veterans, and kind of those younger guys who aren't who are young but aren't rookies anymore as well? Sure. Well, you know, as as most players find, by the time you get into your third year, sometimes it takes the four, you end up being pretty good. And then this is kind of the time to make that jump. And so we're hopeful that that's the case where these guys aren't necessarily – babies or young guys or rookies anymore and they're they should be able to be strong contributing players that can complement our older older guys so i think that's the hope um and those guys are certainly on track they're working really hard putting the time in and uh, i think we're confident in what, what they can do moving forward i've got a juneteenth trivia question for you let's hear it i'm kidding i'm kidding uh <laughs> uh we've seen obviously denver win a championship uh and they'll be restocked, and now Phoenix is at it, Bradley Beal reportedly. Does, does these moves change, maybe how, your approach at all or what you might want looking into this season? You know, we're not we – You don't can tell us about the call Joe gave you when it went down, by the way. <laughs> it's like, so what, what's the deal? <laughs> um, no, I mean, look, – we're aware of all the stuff going around us in the league and far, as far as trades and rumors and all that stuff, we're, but we're pretty focused on our, on our own team. And I think the one thing we came out of last year with is uh, we've got a good enough core and nucleus and just how, how do we get better? Is that internally, is that externally, is that both? And so not getting too caught up with what goes on around us, but at the same time, you, you got to know that stuff, you got to understand it, and you got to also you know, have a clear feel for what other teams are trying to do in order for us to make the right moves and look at things. So um, I don't know, Joe, do you have any more comments on theoretical trades that actually haven't gone through yet? No. Nope. Technically? No. Nope. All right. <laughs> Thank you for the hint. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, uh, you mentioned the Jordan Poole contract. There's been various decisions made over the last four or five years, and we've all had Bob Myers moves. But can we assume that you were in on these, that you were your opinion was heard, and the Jordan Poole contract is a Mike Dunleavy contract? Or, you know, it can, can we just – Kind of just assume that, or we're sure it's it's a Golden State Warriors contract. We those who have been here and made decisions or drafted players, traded players, signed players, we stand behind all those moves over the last few years. So um, anything I've been here for, I stand on board. And the three championships I wasn't like, I'm down with that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just add a comment to you, Tim, on that. Um, Mike answered it very well. People love to ascribe. I, I read the stuff too. I'm, I mean, read every, I read everything. I watch everything. People describe, oh, that guy was, you know, Dunleavy's guy, or that guy was uh, Kerr's guy, or whatever. That's actually not how it happens. It's just not true. It is a we thing. I don't know how many times I have to say it. We get in a room, and yes, we argue, we discuss, we. That's what you're supposed to do. And we come out as one and make a decision for the organization. And that is true with almost every decision, if not every decision, that we've ever made on a player. So to say it's one guy's guy or another guy's guy, it's just, you know, that is some media person or some guy out in some other team making that stuff up. Because that doesn't exist. Uh, I'm just, Mike, uh, Joe sitting right next to you. Uh, it's been commented by Bob and others that got a fairly strong personality. Uh, I know it's going to be tough to answer this maybe when I'm sitting right next to you, but how are you ready for Are you ready for this? Are you ready for being in a room where Joe expresses his opinion quite uh, apparently or texts you or calls you or calls you again or calls you again? Is this something that you're ready for? Absolutely. Uh, one, knowing, getting to know Joe over the last few years, I'm comfortable with it. But two, I wouldn't want it any other way as far as having maybe an owner that's less involved, less opinionated, less competitive, less willing to spend to make the roster better giving us the resources we need. G give me all that stuff versus the alternative. So, yeah, I, I think I'm ready for it. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing our partnership, and I think we'll have a great relationship. Mike, the uh, fan base sort of took a wait-and-see approach with Bob when he was promoted. What's your message to, to the Warriors fan base as you get this new job? Well, first of all, thank you. You know, thank you for your passion and, and, and just investment in this team. Uh, with what we've been able to witness the last few years um, has just been incredible. Love coming to the games and you know seeing our 
seeing our fans and, and, and the way they, they bring it each and every night. We've got the best crowd in the league and just an amazing following, not only through the state, the country, but the whole world. So thank you for your support. And then from that, you know, I think despite what people have said, the future is bright. Uh, the future is bright because we have good players now. We have good young players. And then, like I said before, I think our, our processes are good. Our decision making is sound. And we're, we're capable of doing the things that we, we need to do to have long-term sustainability. And so um, I think we all should be excited. You mentioned having a conversation, at least so far, with Steph. Um, how, how involved do you think he will be over the next couple of weeks? And how involved do you want to, want to have him uh, you know, in rebuilding this roster or doing whatever you do in the next couple of weeks? Well, look, I mean, S Steph can be as involved as he wants, as far as I'm concerned. But that's not his personality. Um, you know, he likes to be kept in the loop on stuff, which he's earned and deserved. Um, so I think just because I value his, we value his opinion, his thoughts on stuff, you know, I think you're always running things by him. But you know, Steph just wants to work on his game, play some golf, be with his family. So I'm not going to bother him too much. What's just kind of your vision for this roster heading into next season? What are some areas that you think need to improve on? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think first and foremost, like it's been said, to be able to get Draymond back would be huge. Um, from there, I want to. Uh, we would love to make improvements to the point of: can we add some shooting? Can we add some more versatility? Um, and can, can we add some connectivity? Uh, whether that's you know through ball handling, passing, veteran experience. Um, I think we, we've heard, talked to the coaching staff, we talked to our players. We have a good sense of kind of what we need to do. And fortunately, it's nothing drastic, but. There's some things we can do around the margins and you know, make a move here or there, then we're going to be open to it. I know you said you want Draymond back. And obviously, Steph is untouchable. But are there any other players that you view are unmovable at this point? At this point, um, it's you know we, we love our roster. And as far as un untouchables and who we'd like to trade and all that, don't care to get too much into specifics. But other than to say that, we, we, we frankly, we get a lot of calls people value guys on our roster. So I think we're in a good shape, good shape in that respect. And, um, you know, we'll always look to evaluate stuff. Hi, Mike. On your left right here. Uh, one of the first things that, that Joe said was just how you fit into this culture. And you talked about some of the relationships you have with Steve, with players. Uh, Steve's exit interview, he said, one of the main priorities for this organization this summer is rebuilding some of the trust that had propelled your dynasty that might have been shaken uh, this season. What do you see uh, that needs to happen, the steps that have to be taken to rebuild that, and, and where do you see your role in that? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's um, something that, you know, like I said, can be done amongst the group that we have mm -hmm. internally through stuff over the course of the summer, but also some, you know, external changes perhaps where, you know, Steve, we've used the word connectivity, where we're more connected as a group on the floor. You know, you look at the championship team with the Nuggets, those guys were dialed in together. You look at us in 2022, that's how we were. If we can get back to that that feel, that standpoint, um, I, I think given our talent, that's going to give us a chance to compete for a title.